Hi, everybody. So I received a wonderful comment from one of the viewers of these videos. And I wanted to, I, I'll go ahead and share the comment below. Um, but basically, they were reflecting on uh, my previous video. You don't have to have watched that one. But um, it was about temptation management, uh, meaning, you know, we are tempted to do things in our life, be certain behaviors that we want to uh, get rid of, uh, that we don't find is good for us going forward. Uh, maybe we've been dealing, battling with that behavior for a long time and uh, we want to change. And I was talking in a previous video about uh, you know, some thoughts about managing the temptations. And I, I, I also asked uh, all of you, um, does that word temptation make sense to you? Do you like it? Do you... Um, that does it does it resonate with you or do you do you want to use a different word or different phrase so um, the person who commented I, I really like what they said about how they they prefer uh, the framing of um, what is it? I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and read it read it here um, the temptation has a moral connotation they wrote a negative judgment about us for doing the action and uh, Neil, I, I want to say this is interesting because in our uh, postmodern world, we might say, um, you know, there's, if you haven't heard of the, um, I really like uh, spiral dynamics, this idea of how culture, cultures go through different stages of development. And, um, you know, in the pre-modern world, it was like, it was like the authority figure, the the priest, the shaman, the king would would tell uh, the people what is right, what is wrong, right? And that's just that's the law, and that's the you know law of the land or the spiritual law or whatever you want to break the laws. And then the modern world, the pre-modern world, you know, uh, and then the modern world. By the way, these are all you know different cultures are in pre-modern, modern, and post-modern. So it's not like there are no longer pre-modern cultures; that some of them still exist. And it could be like a, a particular family or, or, or a nation, you know, anyway. So modern is um, much more scientifically minded and there is still an idea of doing right, doing wrong, but it's more like, you know, um, going by the scientific uh, right, wrong, etc. And then the postmodern world, which is much of the West now, is where there is no right and wrong. <laughs> there is no right and wrong. It's just personal preference. It's just personal style. Um, and I, I think it's interesting because I, of course, have some of that influence myself. Um, I like to think of negative and positive judgment kind of like a tool to play with. So I kind of have some po postmodern influence, obviously some modern and even some pre-modern influence. I, I like to think of it as a tool. Judgment isn't necessarily bad judgment. Funny thing is, bad, if we say bad, bad judgment is bad, well, we've just, <laughs> we've just used bad judgment on bad judgment. Uh, we, we've, we're judging bad judgment as being a, a bad thing. Uh, and, um, and so I like to think of judgment as a tool. It's just a tool for us to use. Like, I, I choose at this time to judge this thing as bad because I'm trying to shape myself in a certain way. And, um, I, I, and, and yes, it might, it might not be a good thing. Well, if we judging, if we say, oh, if I'm judging someone else, if I'm judging somebody else, that's a bad thing. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing, I shouldn't be judging other people. Then we're using <laughs> negative judgments on ourselves for doing the, j ju anyway, it's kind of the circ circular thing when we, when we judge judgment. And so it's, I feel like ultimately, I don't know, I just use it as a, as, as a tool. It's like, well, I, I don't know if we can get, a, get around dualistic thinking in this life um, when we have a left and right brain, when we, when, when, anyway, um, I'm not that enlightened. So maybe I'm not non, I'm not, in, I'm not non-dual enlightened yet. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, non-dual thinking doesn't come naturally to me yet. Um, beyond the, beyond the, the right and wrong there's a field and i will meet you there but wait isn't that 
also judging the fact that there are two parts of the field. <laughs> anyway, uh, this whole non-dual thing confuses the heck out of me because non-dual is essentially a judgment on dual. But anyway, so, so I use it as a tool. I use, it as, I use dual, dualistic thinking and judgment as a tool to say, no, and, and it's true. Like if we get too fixated on the tool itself, then maybe, you know, it's not as helpful, right? And so, so yes, I appreciate what this person wrote that it's reminding me to use it as a tool to not get so fixated on it, not to be so um, self-punishing maybe about the judgment. Just, oh, that's a, that's a tool. Okay, I'll go, that's right. Okay, I, I don't want to go there right now. I want to go here instead, right? And so what they wrote is, I like words like getting pulled away from aligning with our intention. Getting pulled away from aligning with our intention because it's just what life does. And I really like that. It's true. Just living life, right? With so many other influences in a daily life, we get pulled away from what we what intention we set in the morning or at the beginning of the hour or whatever it may be or the beginning of the year <laughs> easily get pulled away from the intention and um what this person wrote is that for them to to get back aligned with intention to, so this person wrote that they were a heavy smoker for for many years and for several years it was really hard to get out of you know for the final few years the smoking was very hard but what, what helped them was to find something good to replace with the bad habit i mean it's brilliant right it's like it's they they, they found yoga they started doing yoga regularly instead of the smoking and then they also had to do some inner work of the relationship they had with their with their mother and um and finding that they can that that they can love themselves and how to love themselves. And um, yeah, so I really appreciate that comment and how each of us, as we so-called manage temptations or find alignment from our intention with our behavior again, we do it in different ways. For some of us, it's a um, particular mantra. For others, it's you know, journaling for others it's uh, meditation for others it's yoga for others it's finding some positive behavior to replace i think that's generally a good uh, scientifically proven method of habit change right it's finding something good to replace the previous habit you want to get away from um, but but like i said a lot of us may have you know, I, may, probably all of us have some past influences past traumas some uh, uh, baggage you might say emotional baggage to unpack and to um, find a way through that's healthier and that's more loving of ourselves and of the whole and that may really shift our ability to behave in a way that we want to behave going forward um so yeah i uh, i really i just wanted to take a moment to appreciate that comment and this this idea of aligning alignment you know uh, we might even say alignment therapy uh, <laughs> aligning ourselves back to our intention because getting pulled away is normal so the question i guess to as to end this video for you is how do you how might you need what might you need to work with maybe some therapy some inner emotional baggage unpacking uh, some replacement behavior what do you need to work with to effectively realign your behavior with your intentions or to manage your temptations whatever way you want to say it what do you need to do what's unique to you that you that is that you believe will be effective for you to realign your behavior again with your intention so that you can live your values so they can live more purposefully so they can live more in tune with the god source that is the source of your spiritual um, destiny so with that thank you so much for watching and i hope this is helpful in some way